On July 7, 2021, Haitian President Jovenel Moise was assassinated when gunmen attacked his residence in Pellerin 5, a district of Peschenville, at around 1 a.m. The gunman fired bullets that struck the president's forehead and torso, and he suffered severe injuries, including a gouged-out left eye and broken bones in his arm and ankle. He died at the scene, where he was found lying on the floor with his shirt soaked in blood. His wife, Martine Moise, was also shot but survived and was airlifted to Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami for treatment. None of their children were home during the attack. After the president's murder, acting Prime Minister Claude Joseph issued a press release attributing the attack to a group of unidentified individuals, some of whom spoke Spanish. Haitian police alleged that the assassination was carried out by a group of 28 mercenaries, consisting of 26 Colombians and two Haitian Americans. The two Haitian Americans told interrogators that they had been hired as interpreters and claimed they were unaware of the assassination plan, believing they were to act as interpreters for the president's arrest. Haiti's official languages are Creole and French, while the Colombian suspects spoke Spanish. Most of the Colombian detainees were identified as former soldiers, including a lieutenant colonel. Family members of the suspects stated that they had been hired to provide security in Haiti. Many retired Colombian soldiers work for security firms abroad, particularly in the United Arab Emirates, where their training and experience in combating armed groups are highly valued. In December 2021, the New York Times suggested that Moise's assassination might be linked to his efforts to curb narcotics trafficking and his plans to expose high-ranking Haitian officials involved in the drug trade. Ariel Henry, who had been appointed prime minister by Moise shortly before his assassination, was later accused by several officials of being connected to Joseph Felix Badio, an alleged mastermind of the assassination. Rodolphe Jar, another suspect, claimed that Henry was close to Badio and had protected him after the assassination. Judge Gary Aurelian, the top judicial official overseeing the case at the time, stated that Henry was friends with Badio and had planned the assassination with him. On July 10, Moise's widow, Martine Moise, urged Haitians via Twitter to ensure that her husband's contributions were not in vain. But the investigation into the assassination took a dramatic turn when she and former Prime Minister Claude Joseph were among 51 individuals indicted over the murder. The indictments, detailed in a 122-page document by Judge Walter Wesser Voltaire, marked a significant development in the pursuit of justice for Jovenel Moise's assassination. According to the indictment, Martine Moise conspired with Claude Joseph to replace her husband as president. The charges range from complicity and criminal association to armed robbery, terrorism, and assassination. The judge's document states there is serious and sufficient evidence against those named. Martin Moise's legal team, represented by the firm PBYNA, vehemently denied the charges. Paul Turner, a partner at the firm, described the charges as ridiculous and unjust, asserting that Mrs. Moise had no motive for the attack and that her inclusion in the indictment is based on her imperfect recollection of the traumatic night. Claude Joseph, in his defense, accused the then Prime Minister Ariel Henry of manipulating the justice system for political gain. Joseph claimed that he had consistently sought international assistance for the investigation and had been a vocal advocate for justice following the assassination. The indictment also quoted former Haitian Justice Ministry official Joseph Felix Badio, who alleged that Martin Moise and Claude Joseph plotted to oust President Moise. According to Badio, the plan was for Claude Joseph to lead the country until elections could be held, during which Martin Moise would run for president. Claude Joseph called these allegations part of a Machiavellian agenda by the government, accusing Prime Minister Henry of benefiting from President Moise's murder. Despite Joseph's accusations, the Prime Minister's office maintained that the examining magistrate acted independently in issuing the charges. Since the assassination, Haitian authorities have arrested at least 44 individuals, including 20 Colombians. The investigation has also extended beyond Haiti, with U.S. prosecutors bringing charges against 11 men allegedly involved in the plot. The case remains mired in controversy with significant political implications for Haiti. The ongoing gang violence and the government's failure to organize elections have further destabilized the nation.
The indictment of Martin Moise and Claude Joseph marks a significant development in the investigation into President Jovenel Moise's assassination. As the legal process unfolds, the accusations have highlighted the deep-seated political tensions and challenges facing Haiti. The international community continues to watch closely, hoping for justice and stability in a country that has long struggled with both.